I'd like to share with you how to raise the RPM limit on a Denso ECU. The first thing you want to do is remove the ECU from the car and then ground yourself to make sure you're not carrying a static charge. There's a lot of static sensitive components inside this ECU. Next you'll need to remove the motherboard and locate the crystal or crystals that are on this motherboard. This one happens to have two crystals. By changing the resonant frequency of these crystals, you can overclock the ECU and raise your RPM limit. So flip the board over and locate the crystal on the back side of the board. You'll need to have a soldering iron to soften the leads on the crystal, and it's really handy to have a vacuum desoldering plunger to remove any excess solder from the board. Once you've removed the crystals, you can install a crystal socket and then select a pair of matching higher frequency crystals and install those onto the motherboard. An alternative that I like better is to use this adjustable crystal frequency emulator which is called the Magnum RPM Limit Control. By removing the cover on the Magnum controller you can solder one of the original crystals inside of the unit to establish a base frequency. Then using these buttons you can adjust the output frequency of the Magnum up or down. I chose to install the Magnum outside of the ECU to make it easier to adjust, so I drilled a hole in the cover, installed a rubber grommet for the output wire from the Magnum to go into the ECU. Next I ran the output wire through the rubber grommet. Next I had to use a process of trial and error to figure out which side of the crystal socket to install the output wire from the emulator into. Then I flipped the motherboard over and ran a jumper from that emulator wire on the first crystal socket over to one of the holes on the second crystal socket. And once again, this involved a process of trial and error to figure out which hole was the right one to solder the wire into. At that point, I was ready to reinstall the motherboard into the case of the ECU. Then I installed the ground wire for the coaxial shield cable on the output of the Magnum controller and grounded that to the case of the ECU. Next I reassembled the case and here I'm ready to reinstall the ECU back into the car. And once the ECU is installed you need to locate power and ground for the Magnum controller. Now the power supply wire has to remain hot whenever the engine is cranking or running and then turned off whenever the key is turned off so as not to drain the battery down while the car is parked. And there you have it. That's how you adjust the RPM limit on a Denso ECU. One last thing. If you ever need to connect a diagnostic scan tool to the car, you must reset the clock speed of the ECU back to stock in order for handshaking to occur between the ECU and the diagnostic scan tool. I'm John Broderick. Thanks for watching. Please check out my other videos and questions or comments below in the comment section. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And go ahead and subscribe to my videos if you'd like to see more.